Hello again, Jules fans. Welcome back to Jules and the Blood TV. It is time for our first Monday review of the league season. Saturday saw us take on Hull City at an empty Priestfield Stadium for our Skybet League One opener. It wasn't very good, unfortunately. Um, I'm not going to sit here and pretend otherwise. It was patchy at best, naive at worst, um, and generally... We just didn't get out of second gear, unfortunately, did we? I was I was pleased with the lineup when it was announced. I said we had to go with the three in behind the striker that had excelled against Crawley last Tuesday. That was that was Jordan Graham and Trey Coyle and Jacob Mellis. But aside from Graham, really, we just didn't get any of them danger players on the ball, and we didn't affect the game in the final third enough, did we? And obviously, we got off to the worst possible start. Um, we were one nil down inside three minutes. Um, we just didn't settle. Um, Trey Coyle, unfortunately, was very lightweight in a challenge on our left-hand side as they attack down their right and lets them get in behind. And from there, we don't set up correctly. We let the ball come into the box. George Honeyman, who's a good player at this level, is allowed to get his shot off. He scuffs it. We're not alert and it falls to, to the lad in the six-yard box and he's got a tap in from about three yards with no one anywhere near him, unfortunately. So we were playing catch-up after around 180 seconds, which wasn't ideal. Um... And our best chance of the game came a minute later. Um, John Akindi got in behind and uh, got himself one-on-one -on -one with a keeper. Fired straight at him when he could have gone across him. And I said at the time, I thought he was he was unlucky in the sense that the angle was narrowing. But I've seen it a couple of times and I think he probably should do a bit better. He, he doesn't catch it, unfortunately. And it makes it really easy for the keeper to shovel it back out into open play. But maybe if that had gone in, it had been a completely different game. But it didn't. And... That was probably as good as it got for us in terms of an attacking sense. Um, we were very blunt. John Akindi was isolated too much of the time. He wasn't poor, first half, not by any means. But he just if he did get it, he had no one anywhere near him. And like I say, we didn't get the likes of Coyle or Mellis on the ball. Uh, Dempsey was trying to create things from deep. Um, Stuart O'Keefe was keeping it ticking over. But we just looked ragged, really ragged. And... Uh, we're probably glad to get in at the break at only 1-0 down and it gave Steve Evans obviously a chance to, to get into us and, and regroup and we made some changes at the break, didn't we? We bought on um, for Dane Oliver to partner John Akindi and uh, seeing there was a change of system but it, it didn't really work. Trey Coyle came off as well, I think, didn't he, at the break but it, it didn't really work. We looked lopsided, we looked unbalanced. I think for a period it looked like we had Stuart O'Keefe playing as a left-sided midfielder, which he isn't. Um, for Dane Oliver started okay. He was stretching their back four and uh, and working the channels, um, which was creating space, but we just we just didn't get runners. and We never really got the ball into, into a decent area second period. Let's be honest, I think Jordan Graham, who was very... Proactive first period, spent too much of the second period in his own half, and I can only remember once or twice he tried to beat his man, and that maybe he was under instruction from the management team. But he was a most dangerous player first half, and and we just didn't get him into the right area second period, and it it it, it you know it was a detriment to our performance. Not that our performance was that good anyway, and. All the time it was one nil though we were still in the game, and and then we had to deal with Carl Dempsey going off injured and. Fingers crossed that's nothing too serious. Um, Matty Willock came on for, for him, I believe. And uh, still nothing changed, unfortunately, did it? Stuart Robertson, that was the other lad that came on at half-time, wasn't it? Sorry, yeah. It was Oliver and uh, Robertson for, for Mellis and Coyle. Um, we saw flashes of neat footwork, bits of skill from Stuart Robertson, Scott Robertson, sorry. But um, all too often he was looking for a Hollywood pass too early. I think there's, I remember three times where he's got it on the halfway line and he's trying to clip it in behind, but he's just overhit it and it's just run straight out harmless for a goal kick. So not the best of debuts for the young lad, but obviously he'll get better with time and with more training sessions. And he certainly wasn't the only one who was below par because I think absolutely everybody was. Um, even the better players in the group weren't as, as good as we know they can be, especially the likes of Connor Ogilvy and Jack Bonham. Jack's distribution a couple of times was a little bit air him, scare him and, and nearly got him in and in front of him we had Zek Medley and Christian Magoma two young centre halves Medley a couple of times nearly got caught wanted to have an extra touch and was and was was um nearly had the ball pinched off his toe 
Um, he seemed better when he, when it was stuff that he had to just do on instinct, like edit away or clear it. When he had a little bit of time, I was a little bit more concerned. And obviously there's questions as to why Jack Tucker didn't start. But I'm sure Steve Evans and Paul Rayner will have their reasons. And I'd imagine he'd start Tuesday night when we do play again. Um, but I think one thing that was, was abundantly clear in the terms of the, in the sense that we didn't create a proper chance aside from the John Akindi one-on-one -on -one in the first period, which came inside five minutes. And I think the best bit of football we put together was in the 92nd minute, which was when we worked it from right to left, I think. And, and you know, Connor Ogilvy finally got on the overlap. I think it's the only time I can remember our fullbacks really getting on, um, which was a real shame. Um, I know Robbie McKenzie at right back's not that type of fullback, and he was he was playing in place of the suspended Ryan Jackson, who we know naturally will bob on. Um, but Connor Ogilvy struggled to get on as well. But yeah, he got a good ball into the box, and unfortunately, neither John Akindi or Vadane Oliver could get on the on the end of it, and it was it was played into a really dangerous area. But that pretty much summed up our performance. Unfortunately, it was almost nearly could have been, but never really looked like it was going to be, did it? Um, yeah, just really, really frustrating. I thought first half, Hull didn't want to engage with us when we got in the final third. They was allowing us to put balls into the box. Was our quality ever really good enough? Probably not quite. Um, I imagine Steve Evans saw that and that's why he went the two up top. But again, second period, we didn't do enough to test them properly. Again, we was allowed the ball in certain areas, but we didn't do enough with it. And credit to Hull City and Grant McCann's boys, that they managed the game pretty well. All the time, it was still only one zip. We were still in it, but second goal soft as well, isn't it? It's just a free kick that comes in and Josh McGinnis uses all his experience against Zek Medley, puts his hand on him so that Zek can't get off the ground and it glances a header in the far corner. Jack Bonham's got absolutely no chance and 2-0 with about eight or nine minutes to go, it was done. And like the boys said on their, uh, the fan reaction video that we're doing at the moment in place of, of Match Day Live, so thanks to to Phil and to, to Louis and to Reese and to Dan and to David for, for getting involved. I think we all sort of thought amongst all, all along the same lines, didn't we? But it, it's not something that defines our season, not by any means. It's one defeat. There's 45 more games to go. Um, there's still 135 points to play for, but bottom line is we'll have to be a lot better than we were on Saturday. Um, but as it stands at the moment, you're not getting much time on the training ground. We have another game Tuesday night, which we'll get on to in a sec. Um, but in terms of positives and negatives, I'm just trying to pick out a couple for each each game now, just as a new little feature. In terms of positives, it was a real struggle. Christian McGomer, I thought, was relatively solid in a back four that, that struggled all afternoon. Um, probably the one that was least error prone. I thought Robbie McKenzie did all right at right back, but... Like I've said, he's not the same as Ryan Jackson. He's not one that's going to get up and down. Um, Jordan Graham was a threat first half. Um, that's about it, unfortunately. In terms of negatives, um, naive defensively, again, looked very inexperienced. Like I've already mentioned, Zek Medley caught on the ball a couple of times. We just looked out. We just looked like the shape was, was not always there. Lack of communication, lack of leadership in the back four. Um, Jordan Graham was too deep second half. Like I say, it might have been instruction, but after being relatively threatening in the first period, he just didn't get on enough in the second. Um, strikers, we need a different type of front man, don't we? For Dane Oliver and John Akindi, for all their qualities, they're too much of the same. We cannot play them two up top. I could see the sense in it second half because we were getting crosses in, but then we stopped getting crosses in when we had them both on. And it was just all very flat and all very one-dimensional, wasn't it? And obviously the big the big negative as well is, is the Carl Dempsey injury, our captain, that's, that's open and keep our fingers crossed that it's, it's nothing serious or long-term. But but that's done Saturday now, it's out of the way. We can't change it. We have to learn from what mistakes we did make and build on the positives <coughs> and move on and make sure that we don't make the same, cause ourselves the same problems again. Um before next Saturday, though, there is a League Cup tie on Tuesday evening. We host Championship Coventry. Um, they've played two games so far this season. They don't have to deal with the EFL trophy anymore because they're in the second tier. They beat MK Dons 1-0 away in the first round of this competition with a Tyler Walker goal, their new front man. And on Saturday, they were relatively unlucky. They went down 2-1 at Bristol City to an 82nd minute goal. Uh, Matt Godden off the mark. So 
in turn, we know their squad's full of good of good players. They were very good in our division last season. They've added to the group with the likes of Tyler Walker. They've got two strikers off the mark already. So I think regardless of who they pick, it's going to be a tough game. I'd imagine we'll make changes. Um, but I'm not going to sit here and make a score prediction because we don't know what the two lineups are going to be. But it'll be another good test. It's another good opportunity for to try to try a couple of things for Steve Evans and Paul Rayner because it's not a competition we're going to win. So we can experiment to a degree. I'd imagine those that didn't start will come into the starting eleven. Can't see Carl Dempsey being involved, and I think he'd be struggling for Saturday to be quite honest at the moment. Um, but yeah. That's about it from today. It's the first real negative one for a while. Um, but like I say, it's not season-defining, as disappointing as it was. Uh, please remember that there is still our competition running in conjunction with FanHub, where you can win some merchandise. So just check out my Twitter feed and retweet and join up the mailing list. Um, it is available on Facebook and Instagram as well. As I say, thanks to all the lads that got involved at the weekend with their fan reactions. It was, um, it was much appreciated and it certainly keeps the channel ticking over. Please keep liking, subscribing, retweeting and doing all that you do. Be back Thursday for another match preview as I look ahead to Wigan Athletic away and looking back on Tuesday night's EFL Cup tie. But that is enough from me today. Enjoy your week and until next time, up the jewels. Yeah.